Hey, welcome to Square Body Stuff. I'm Chad, and in this video we're going to go over intakes and intake adapters and spacers. I'm going to take a little break from working on Squeaky for a minute. I've got some stuff set up here to answer a question for a viewer. He commented wanting to know uh, about putting his Elderbrock carburetor on a factory intake. So I've got some stuff set up here, and we're going to go over that real quick. So what I've got here is a factory big block cast iron intake, a factory aluminum small block intake, which they're basically the same thing as the factory cast iron intake. They're just aluminum. I didn't have a iron one in the shop handy, so I just grabbed this one. It was hanging on the wall. This is kind of your next step up on replacing your factory intake on a small block Chevy. This is the Elderbrock Performer. Uh, kind of a dual pattern, dual pattern flange, a little bit taller, plenum on it, a little bit of an upgrade. Uh, this is a Elderbrock, uh, what is this, uh, Victor 4 plus 4. This is what's going to be going on our 339 stroker. Uh, but this has the standard 4150 square bore holly flange. And of course, obviously, these have the uh, factory type quadrajet flange on them. Now a little bit of the difference on these is your spread bores versus your square bore versus your, this is kind of a dual pattern. Uh, this is this is a nice one to have here to show the difference in between them because the bolt pattern on the quadrajets, the spread bores are narrower than the flange on the Holly 4150. And this shows the actual difference because this is a dual pattern. Now the only one I don't have a representation of is the big Dominator style flange, the 4500 flange. It's it's similar to the 4150 except for it's just a lot bigger. But that's if if you're into that stuff, you're you're beyond kind of what we're going over here. So I'm gonna go over the standard stuff that you might run into on your old square body, uh, adapting different carburetors to them because you know I'm I'm a Holly guy. I prefer Hollies, but I don't have any problem running. A Quadrajet or Elderbrock, I've run them all, had good success with all of them. I've even had bad stuff with all of them. So, but I do prefer running Hollies, it's just, just my preference. There's nothing wrong with any of them. So I've got a Holly 750 double pumper. Uh, standard, just run of the mill, probably mid 80s Quadrajet. And uh, Elderbrock car, I can't remember if this is the uh, 500 or 600 CFM. I've got I just grabbed one off the wall, just hanging up. So this will have your standard 4150 flange. Um, this will have your quadrajet flange, obviously, spread bore. And these Elderbrocks are also a dual pattern. You can see the two different size holes, or two different patterns. Now to look underneath these things, uh, the bores on those, pretty well square. That's why they call them a square bore. Then you've got your spread bore your small primaries, your big secondaries, your Elderbrocks. Uh, you got a little bit smaller primaries and secondaries, but they're not really considered a spread bore. They're still considered a square bore. All right, so these are some adapters. Uh, this is your standard open adapter to go from your spread bore to a square bore. This is another style of adapter. I don't really particularly care for these. Don't really even know why I have it, but I do have it. That's one of the bolts for the other one. Uh, I don't like these. They're just too res too restrictive. Too much stuff going on in here. So, but I just want to show it as a, as a possible candidate. If you for some reason like the way this looks, I just don't like these. So I'm going to set it aside, get it out of the way for right now. Here's another style of adapter if you want to call it that it's just a thin plate it does have gaskets stuck to it and i want to leave them on there to kind of show uh the pattern of how they're mounted and show you the use for these all right to get back to mike warren's question which is pretty standard deal whenever you're trying to adapt to different carburetors you get a truck uh the carburetor that's on it possibly a quadrajet uh isn't working right you don't like it you want to put an elderbrock on there that's his scenario i'm assuming he wanted to put an elderbrock on his factory intake so i'm going to go over real quick the best way to do that 
uh, which is using one of these open style of course I've got the bolts taped up so they don't fall out I took this one off but the way these work is you'll have a gasket that goes onto your plate and you can see this one here actually this spacer was on this built big block uh, intake but I'm gonna show the small blocks I'm assuming he probably has a small block it's all the same stuff really when it comes to adapting the carburetors but then you have these four inside bolts that mount the spacer or the adapter to the intake and then these studs out here can mount to your carburetor now his question was is if he has an Elderbrock can he just run studs straight through the Elderbrock through these holes here into the intake and the answer to that question is a simple yes I've got another spacer here what did I do with that I set it aside oh it's underneath here I've got one without the hardware on it. it doesn't have a bottom gasket but you can set that on there and if you have a Elderbrock with the dual pattern mounting holes you can definitely just run a stud or a bolt straight through your carburetor flange through your adapter straight to your intake as long as you have gaskets where you need them and they're the correct gaskets that will work right there just run them straight through you don't have to have the two separate pieces of hardware Now I prefer to go ahead and, and mount the adapter to the intake, that way you can get it good and torqued down and tight to the intake, and then, then run the bolts, uh, well do the setup like this here. Uh, use the bolts for the intake and then bolts for the, or studs for the carburetor. I just feel that that's a, a better way to seal everything. Uh, that's just personal preference. Uh, we'll go back to this big block intake. Everything works the same. In a way, I feel like I shouldn't have to go over this the wrong way to put that particular adapter on there. Uh, but I have personally seen it put on upside down and wrong. It was actually on this truck here with the 305. Whenever I got this truck, it had factory 305, stock intake, stock exhaust manifolds, everything was factory. Except for it had a, I think, a 500 CFM Elderbrock carburetor on it. Had the adapter, it ran like garbage. It it is it acted like it had a huge vacuum leak, in which it did because when I pulled the carburetor off to check it out, this adapter. Let me get this other adapter. It don't have the bolts on it. This adapter was upside down. Uh, yeah, I, I can't can't make that stuff up, folks. It was literally upside down. It was leaking really bad around here. Uh, all I did was flip the adapter over with some new gaskets, put the car rear back on, and it ran like a champ. Uh, but anyways, not sure how or why they done that, but it happened, I've seen it, so I wanna address that situation. Now let's go over this little plate. Uh, like I said, this is just a little thin steel plate with the, uh, Holly 4150 square flange and a dual bolt pattern. This has the flange mark out for this particular intake. Actually, I'm not gonna say I haven't I haven't run this adapter with just a carburetor on top of it, such as this. But on this particular style intake, an aftermarket intake with an open divider like this versus the closed up divider this will work to adapt and actually you probably need this type of a plate to run a square bore 4150 style either Elderbrock or Holly on this style intake this is the bare minimum you'll need because as you can see it helps seal it all up now this this gasket here had a spacer on it and this is the setup I ran on uh, on my crew cab buddy on that 468. Has the same dual pattern type uh, flange on it. The reason I don't run this plate anymore is because the spacer I put on it didn't have these gaps. It was solid 
the same on front or top and bottom so I didn't need this plate to seal everything up but as you can see I needed it on on with this spacer because it was had these little gaps talking about that uh, using this plate with spacers I've actually screwed up myself messed up as you can see on this intake looks like it was leaking a little bit well this is the intake that was that I put on my 305 after I put the cam swap or put the different cam put the headers on it I had this intake just sitting up on the shelf I have actually I have another one just like it uh, these are the only aftermarket intakes I had available just sitting there they didn't cost me anything when I started playing with that 305 so I put this on there I put this two inch spacer my nitrous plate and this 750 holly on there and ran it we even got several passes you can go check that out on some previous videos but what I forgot to do <laughs> was I forgot to put this plate on there to seal that up that's a mistake I've made uh, and yes the engine did have a little bit of an issue with it didn't really seem like a vacuum leak but it just it was kind of I don't know it just acted a little weird sometimes but as you can tell it, it was leaking just a little bit around the around the intake still ran good but I should have had that plate on there uh, are you thoroughly confused yet um, I hope not I'm trying to go through this and explain the basics of it so I think I've answered Mike Warren's question about putting his Elderbrock onto his factory intake and I also showed you where'd it go there's that steel plate I also showed you how this just this plate right here is what you'll need on to run a either Elderbrock or Holly on this intake that's the bare minimum you could also use one of these adapters which honestly will be the better choice because you get a little bit of extra plenum volume a little bit of gap in there it'll work better but you cannot just use this on a factory intake because your butterflies will not open the butterflies will hit this so you'll you'll need for factory intake you will need this adapter to go to a factory type style intake on adapting a holly to one of these factory intakes same thing even this uh, aftermarket one same thing you'll need the uh, either one of these adapters spacers or this little plate to put a holly square bore flange on there uh, this intake that was on this big block that's in the truck now uh, I used it was this actual adapter and a carburetor I've got sitting off somewhere else but it was it basically looked something like this so that's the, the Elderbrocks and the Hollies pretty much the same concept as far as adapting adapting them to any of the intakes now if you want to go the other direction for some reason uh, which I've I've done it and it works uh, just had to do it in a pinch but you could go from the 4150 style square bore flange like on this intake it doesn't matter if it's a got the divider in it for a dual plane or if it's an open plane like this but you can run a quadra jet on these intakes too just flipping this adapter over now you will have to run your bolts into your intake and then have the studs coming up through on the adapter to adapt your uh, quadra jet on there but they will work as long as you have the proper hardware you'll have to have longer studs going up through there to match it but you can run a quadra jet on a square bore flange if you want to use that adapter okay I think I've answered the main question I want to answer and I've kind of gone over maybe a little bit of everything I hope I didn't confuse anybody if you have any questions hit me up in the comments below I know I said this is gonna be a short video but I, if I get to explain stuff it's never short with me because I try to be try to be thorough and I bounce around a little bit but if you're if you're new to this channel that's kind of what you're gonna have to put up with a little bit hopefully my shining personality makes up for it but anyways I think that's all I've got for you on this topic if you have any questions again 
hit me up in the comments below. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Until next time, y'all keep your square bodies rolling. We'll catch you later.